testing, lab view graphing. What we'd like to do in this particular video is introduce you to how to make a graph in LabVIEW. The reason why graphing is important is because LabVIEW often sits as your software layer for acquiring data from instruments. And as data comes in, it's often extremely useful to be able to see a graph of the data as it comes in so you know if it's correct and so on. So what we'll do then, let's just get right into it. So I'll go to my block diagram here, and as usual, I'm going to surround my whole program with a while loop right here so I can have a... Um, sort of the system that constantly runs over and over and over again until I stop it. So I'll go down here to the terminal condition, the while loop, and in the Macintosh, I'll control click on this node right here, Windows, you right click on there, but I'll just create a control in there, which gives me sort of a stop button. So this will be a while loop that proceeds, keeps going until the stop button is pressed. The next thing I'll need then is I'm gonna to need to have some area where my graph is gonna appear. So I'll go back to the front panel over here, and when I pull down um, this, sort of familiar area of control indicators here. There's this one here called graph. If I click into that, I can see in a variety of different graph forms in there. Uh, and you have to be careful to pick the right one because they all do slightly different things. There's a waveform chart, a waveform graph, and an XY graph. In this case here, be sure you pull the waveform chart out. So I'll pull out the waveform chart there. I'll make it nice and big. And so this is where we're going to have our graph appear. You can see it has an X axis and a Y axis. And so we'll just get going. And of course, after I draw the waveform and drag the waveform chart into my front panel, I can see my programming icon appear over here that now I'm free to wire into any controls I have going. So what we'll do then, we'll just do something relatively simple. We'll go back down here to mathematics. Let me close this up, go down here to mathematics. And in the numeric area here, if I can find it, I don't think it's in here. It's in here, elementary and special functions, sorry. There's a trigonometric function area in here and I'll just pull the sine wave right out. So I'm going to pull the sine wave out. And what I'll do, I'll just sort of keep it simple here. This variable i down here is the index to the while loop. It starts at 0 and goes to 1 and 2 and 3. In other words, it just counts the number of iterations the while loop has undergone. Let's just take the sine of that number. It's a nice constantly changing number, so I'll just wire that right into the sine. And if I wire this right into the waveform chart, then I'm sort of done. I have a, a LabVIEW program now, which will take the sign of this number, and if I just keep feeding numbers into the waveform chart, that's what the waveform chart does. It'll just start graphing those numbers. So again, as I mentioned, there's several different graphs. The waveform chart has its own behavior in that if you just drag individual numbers into it, it'll start graphing them. So if I go ahead and run this LabVIEW code, you see I have a sine wave up there. But there's a couple things that we need to address about this. First of all, is the sine wave looks very choppy, and that has to do with my sampling over here. In particular, I'm always sampling an integer right here. There's nothing filled in between. Let's take care of that in just a second. And also note that the x-axis here is completely meaningless. In other words, the x-axis here, even though it's labeled time, these aren't actual times here. It turns out that they're just data point numbers. So in that short time this graph ran here, I logged something like 10 million data points or something inside this waveform chart, which isn't very helpful. So we need to address this x-axis now. It's actually such a large topic, it'll be in a different video. But for now, let's just do a few more things just to introduce you a bit more to LabVIEW and how we can maybe uh, work on the graph of it. Let's just break this wire here first of all and get rid of it. So I just hit delete on there, and I'll do control B on Windows or command B on Macintosh to remove all the broken wires. But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go back to mathematics down here. And in numerics here, there's sort of this folder called conversion in there. And if I pull down in conversion here, there's something called DBL, which says to double precision float. Now, what that means in computer language is just a, a variable that can have a decimal after it. So where this is just an integer that goes 0, 1, 2, this can be a number that has a decimal. So if I wire this integer into this little icon here, the blue here will become an orange. See, if I wired this back up to the sine wave here, it'll now become orange, indicating that I've changed the type of the value from an integer to this decimal or floating point. Now, I, I was just doing this to show you the color of the wire, but I don't actually want to have this going to the sine right now. I want to do something else first. So granted, then I can convert this integer to a floating point number. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into mathematics and under numerics here, there's this little thing called expression node in here. And that's extremely useful. If you drag this up into here, what it allows you to do is you can have an input node coming in here, which is any value you want. You can have an output node over here, and the relation between the input and the output will be whatever mathematical expression you type into this expression mode box. So if I run this double here into the input, what it's doing is sending the floating point version of the array counter, excuse me, of the while loop counter into the expression box. Now, if I change this here to something like 2 times pi, 3.14 times x, say, over 5, what that's going to do then 
is the input here will always be known as variable x inside this expression out here. So I'm just using x. I'm just doing something like a 2 pi times x over 5. In other words, I'm scaling this while loop integer into something that's more amenable for taking the sign of. In particular, if we know from a calculus or a trigonometry class, it's always better to take the sign of 2 pi times a variable divided by some period to get, get a little more control over what the sine wave looks like. So if I wire this now into the sine wave graph, like this, then what I should get now is a better looking sine wave. So let me just go ahead and run this now and see what we get. So see the sine wave is a little more rounded out now. It doesn't, has, it doesn't have as many jagged points in it. Still coming in a little bit fast. If I wanted to slow it down, I can go to programming here and there's a timing area right here. There's a weight. I can just drag the weight uh, clock right in there. I'm going to right click or control click on this. I'm going to create a constant and this weight so many milliseconds, which I'll change to 100. I accidentally scrolled off there. Sorry about that. Now if I run it again now, here's the sine wave coming in a bit slower and with a bit better sampling there. So I can even change this now if I just want to experiment with a little bit, change this 5 maybe to a 10, slow it down even more. The period that is and see what we get. There we go. So just a different type of sine wave coming in. So that's it for this video and the quick introduction to how to make graphs in LabVIEW. So it's fairly unsophisticated. I would say the waveform chart is a good option to use for quick visualiz visualization of a bunch of scalar data points that you might be creating with some, some something like maybe coming from a lab jack or a voltage source or something, in this case a sine wave. But again, it isn't very useful because of this x-axis here doesn't really mean anything real. So in the next video, we'll look at how to scale this axis to something in actual real time.